Hey guys, good morning. Welcome to the first official, wait, second official day, first official camp morning of the Transamerica trail trip that I'm taking over the next seven weeks. <clears throat> I thought I'd start by introducing myself. Hi, my name is Ryan, and uh, you're watching One Man Trail. We're gonna go on a little tour of my house for the next mm, seven weeks, and uh, I'll just show you what it, what it's uh, about and um, sort of the things that I have packed and what I brought with me give you a little tour and uh, so this is just a, a little low production quality tour of my rig just to say hello and introduce myself a little bit so <clears throat> it is a of course third gen uh, Toyota Tacoma uh, TRD off-road, uh, nothing super special. It's just a good, reliable truck. And uh, I've got a little over 5,000 miles on it now. Just uh, finished the build recently. Well, I don't know if it's ever finished, but it recently got to the point where I can take it on the trip. Um, let's just start front to back, I guess. I guess that would be the easiest, right? Up front, you'll notice there is no winch yet because well simply I didn't have time to um, sorry I'm getting used to this whole video thing so I'm gonna be a little bit rusty in the beginning I gotta remember to look in the right spot but <clears throat> nothing up front yet there will be a winch in a bumper so that's coming for this trip I don't think I'll really need it let's pray I don't need it um, wheels and tires suspension so it's a method non bead lock fake bolts I know <clears throat> um, zero offset wheel uh, on BFG KM3's 265 75 16s uh, inside we have the standard King OEM uh, bolt-in shocks, uh, coilovers. <clears throat> They're the extended length coilovers with Camberg upper control arms, uniball setup. Nothing, <clears throat> nothing over the top, but it rides really, really good. Um, front and back have the compression adjusters. Are you seeing that? Sorry. Front and back have the compression adjusters. Uh, that makes a huge difference in my opinion uh, because I've been dialing dialing them up uh, from full soft I started I'm now uh, about four clicks off of full soft out of ten on the front and uh, five clicks in the back because <clears throat> there's a little bit more weight in the back uh, let's go to the top sorry I'm all over the place here uh, top is a James Baroud evasion uh, rooftop tent if you're familiar this part pops up you'll see more of that in the future as I, I'll do a full walk around on it pros cons uh, I know a lot of people think it's a ridiculous amount of money to spend for a tent and you're absolutely right it is it's a ridiculous amount but you know what I'm single and not married and so I bought that anyways uh, the front there's a solar panel it's a Renogy 100 watt panel and it's a little bit a little bit jerry rigged right now um <clears throat> i had it flat mounted i had it flat mounted originally and i made really nice tabs uh to where it would mount very cleanly but i didn't like the flat uh positioning i got a little bit of weird turbulence up there and it made too much noise and i wasn't happy with it also angled up like this most of the time the sun is not directly up uh, it's lower on the horizon even if it's noon so th this angle actually is a little bit better uh, I can park and face it towards the Sun and I get a little bit better Sun direct Sun on it uh, another benefit is the bugs go up and over all the bugs that you see on here right now are from before I had this mounted like this ever since uh, I don't get any bugs now on the front of the tent and I don't get any bugs on the panel they just seem to slide right off this rope 
if you see here this is for actually wind um, if you've ever seen an antenna a car radio antenna with a has a little spiral around it that is to break up the wind uh, so that it doesn't flutter behind this tube uh, without this it's unbearable to drive you you can't you simply can't drive it uh, it's too loud all the wind beats on the roof and it's ridiculous with this it's absolutely silent I don't hear anything up here so a little trick uh, it works really really good um, it may or may not look a little bit ghetto fabulous to you I don't mind it I think it kind of looks cool um, but purpose the purpose of it outweighs the looks by far uh, the solar panel runs down into this box there's a deep cycle battery in here um, it's a standard Walmart deep cycle battery. It's nothing special. I would like to replace it with a lithium battery in the future, uh, simply for the performance of the lithium. Uh, you can draw it down further than you can draw this battery down. Um, you don't want to go below like 50% on a regular deep cycle. And the weight. So it's only like 24 pounds versus almost like 60 pounds for a regular deep cycle battery. Uh, the obligatory max tracks. How are you going to take a picture on Instagram without max tracks? I don't know. But <clears throat> I tease about these things because they're so Instagrammable. I guess you could say Insta Overlander. Um, but they are really nice, actually. Um, they're very strong, but you can put weight on them. They will bend, but they won't shatter when they get cold. So I think they're really good. Uh, I, I'm going to keep using them. Um, I know they're ridiculously expensive for what they are. They're like $300 for a set of two, and I have a set of four. The reason I have a set of four is if, I, if I'm stuck, if I'm really stuck and I need to use those, I want traction on all four tires for one. And if I need to bridge a, a gap like in front of the front tires if I need to bridge something I want to double up two of them on this side and two of them on the other side so that they don't flex as much I'm sorry I know I'm like cutting myself off here because I'm not used to looking at the camera just bear with me I'll get better as I go this uh, is just a just a shovel that I like the size of it it's not too short it's not too long that's what she said and it's from Lowe's. It's just a cobalt shovel. It's just a shovel. You dig a hole, it's a shovel. That's all. Nothing special. Uh, over here, we have an aluminum 10 pound, no, 10, yeah, 10 pound, two and a half gallon, 10 pound, uh, obviously propane tank. It's really lightweight and it won't rust. So that's good. The mount is from Power Tank and they also sell, I believe this is a Worthington tank, but it's labeled. Uh, you know, it's sold by Power Tank. They sell it with their little mount. This is for my grill, which is in one of these bags, and also for the hot water shower, which is also in one of these bags. It's a five liter Triton. You can look it up on Amazon. It's not uh, terribly expensive, but it's got really good reviews, and I hope that it gives me good hot showers. We'll see. That'll be in a future video also. Um, the the rack this is uh lightner designs it's all aluminum and what i really love about it is check out these welds look at how nice they weld their their attention to detail now it wasn't always this way see these welds these are really nice it wasn't always this way their first version they didn't have a super good aluminum welder i thought but these new versions are awesome I have no faults with this rack system at all. It's extremely versatile. All of these uh, panels and boxes can slide anywhere along this rail and you can adapt it to your needs. Now, there, there is a, a negative. Now, I could simply come up here and unbolt these or anybody else can come up here and unbolt these and take your whole box. That kind of sucks, but what are you going to do? I mean, I'm going to maybe make a cover and they also sell, I don't know if you can see it in here, 
I have a safety bolt. It's a special bolt. They sell a, a socket that fits it. And it's the only thing that I've ever seen that has that design. So I would think it would be pretty safe if you installed at least one of those on each box. Um, I have a couple of them. I don't have all of them secured. Eh, whatever. If somebody wants to take a box, they're gonna take a box. You can only do so much. Um, in here, I am not prepared. I'll just show you really quick. It's not super awesome yet, but it's getting there. So in here, I have my ARB twin compressor and the solar controller. Uh, that feeds the deep cycle battery on the other side, and it just gives me all my information. Uh, yeah, so the twin compressor in there and the hose. In here is just general storage, general storage. Uh, you can put, like, loaves of bread, uh, knickknacks, whatever in there. They're not really huge, but now they make a big one that's, like, the size of all three of these. Plus, you don't lose the gaps in the middle, so it's one big, huge one. I'm debating whether or not I'm going to get a big one. I probably will in the future just because there's so many things that you can mount here and here where this gap is like in the way right now. Um, oh, Alucab shadow awning. This is by far probably my best one top one or two mods. That awning is simply amazing. I can unzip it and have it fully deployed 270 degrees around with no support legs uh, in 10 seconds, probably, or less. It's absolutely amazing. And it goes together uh, back in the bag super, super easy. I mean, you don't have to worry about rolling it up super tight and making it fit inside the bag. It just, just fits easily. So we'll talk about that more later. It's great just know that I'm in love with it. Uh, this slider changed my life because can you imagine crawling crawling into the back way up there to get like fuel cans or something? But check this out. Everything's ball bearings these days. Uh, ARB 63 quart Elements fridge. It's the weatherproof one. It can rain on it. You can hose it off. It's great. Uh, tons of room on the inside. I'll do more of a review on this as well. <clears throat> but it holds a bunch of stuff. Obviously, 63 quarts is huge for uh, one person to go camping. But nobody ever complained about not having enough room in their fridge um, or not or having too much room in their fridge this is great and i lock i like the fact that it has a internal lock so that just locked it even if i open it i can't do this unless i put in a code and then it'll lock unlock internally the way i have it wired up is not super fancy i have two of the arb leads uh, their wiring is really nice. It's heavy duty. It's thick and <clears throat> You can't see it here, but I have one coming from the deep cycle battery here And it just comes down to a socket the ARB socket the proprietary one and then I have one coming from the truck battery also When I'm driving during the day, uh, I just plug it into the one from the truck Obviously since the trucks running why not? And then that takes load off of the solar panels and lets the solar panel recharge the battery from the night before uh, quicker than it would if the fridge was also running off of it. However, the panel will make plenty of electricity to run this fridge. This fridge only is drawing like 0.9 to maybe 1.52 at the absolute max. If you put a bunch of warm stuff in there and it has to cool down, then it might draw two amps at the very most. Um, but the panel puts out almost six amps of 12 volt. So there's plenty of reserve power being made in good sunlight to run this. Uh, two fuel cans, 
two five gallon fuel cans, two five gallon water cans. Uh, these front runner bags are awesome. These are the monsoon bags. They are weather tight. They're dust tight, water tight, whatever. They have uh, a vent in it so that when you close it up, roll it up, and then you're compressing it, you can let the air out of it because it will, it will be hard to get the air out if you didn't have that vent because they are so well sealed. These are the front runner stratchets. They're like stretchy, really heavy duty bungee cords, uh, stiffer than a normal, normal bungee cord. And they clip into the front runner uh, system uh, all along here. There's tons of places to put uh, those stratchets. So I like those. I've got two bags here. The bottom one has my tools in it. Sorry. The bottom one has my tools in it. Uh, there's even a uh, Greenworks 80 volt electric chainsaw with uh, a big 4 amp hour battery and the standard 2 amp hour battery. My full tool kit, the full tool rolls, uh, everything I need to probably like take this whole truck apart is in here. Maybe not that many tools, but there's plenty of tools in there because I am super paranoid <laughs> about not having the right tool at the right time. So I pretty much just threw everything from my roll up toolbox in here that I thought I would need. Uh, I think I have too much stuff, but if I did need one of those tools, then it wouldn't be too much stuff, would it? In here is um, a toilet, just in case, you know, if I go to like Moab or something like that, some of those places actually require that you bring uh, a portable toilet with you. So I have that just in case, and you never know. I, if you gotta go number two and it's like a serious you got to go number two. That's good to have. Um, what else is in here? Uh, toilet and a, a camp box for, no. Damn, I forgot what else was in here. There's two like major things in there. We'll go over that later. I, I'm just trying to give you a general run, run around of the truck. Uh, and the bottom, like I said, tools. Over here, this is like camp food stuff, uh, stove, uh, some cast iron skillets, uh, a camp box with utensils and cups and coffee making stuff. That's just generally here because I will take this off and set it off to the side. And then that gives me a really large work surface next to the fridge at about standing height. Uh, that's a really nice little countertop work area and cooking spot. This is a super lightweight uh, aluminum ladder it helps me reach the latches when I'm on off camber ground like I can I can reach the latches here but if I wanted to pull the tent down from here uh, I would need a little lift I'm five foot ten but still this is, truck is getting pretty tall um, in here back here this is a SureFlow, uh, like an RV uh, style uh, pump water pump like an on-demand pump super efficient it runs 12 volts and I use it or I'm going to use it as my shower so this line right here it's right now it's screwed together with a male-to-male -male adapter that's just so I don't get a bunch of dust and dirt in the lines but that comes apart and one line goes to the shower and then the other line just drops into here for water it's a really simple easy setup uh, we'll see I mean haven't used it yet. I tested it. I haven't actually used it. I have a shower enclosure. So that'll be coming down the line too. I'll give you a little rundown on that. Oh, this uh, this part you may have noticed if you're a fan of this lightener stuff. Uh, this part up here is all um, not lightener. This is me basically. Uh, so I built this part. It's an extension and it ties into the lightener rack here with bolts. Uh, into this channel and then there's four places obviously for one on each corner with two bolts each uh, where that whole rack is is mounted to the truck it's not going anywhere it's mounted to the lightener rack I'm sorry not the truck but that gives me a place to run the canopy the, this uh, awning needs a mount so I had to fabricate sorry had, had to fabricate this mount. There's six grade eight uh, zinc coated bolts or zinc coated. I don't know what that gold grade eight coating is. Uh, so this this 
bracket right here takes pretty much all the load and this is super super stout it's not going anywhere um, and then it's also mounted down at the other end uh, and then that gives me a place to you know mount the awning the solar panel and it also protects <coughs> the protects the tent like if I had a branch that came across here it would just sort of protect this tent uh, I'm just sort of I don't know I like the way it looks but it's sort of protecting the investment as well uh, I'm gonna make a version 2 of that that'll be down the road this is like version 1 and then I'll take the notes that I have from this and apply them to the next version uh, if you have any concerns about this gap let me tell you that this is not moving and this is plenty of gap right here <clears throat> let's see what else uh, we'll just put this back in I think okay and then that does latch it's a little bit sticky right now I have to adjust it uh, what else we'll go over the insides later uh, I have Gaia for GPS on an iPad mag magnetically mounted to the dash so it doesn't rattle it's really nice there's a Garmin Glow GPS receiver 10 Hertz receiver that feeds it uh, which is also very very nice better than the GPS internal to the iPad um, I don't know I think that's it oh one more thing on the suspension uh, I have Deaver let me see if I can get this right Deaver Expedition Pack Stage 2 for 700 plus pounds over stock. There's two helper, what do they call them? Like, not really Adelifs, leafs, but there's two load leafs on the bottom, and it's a nine leaf stack. So the stock stack is like four or five thick leaves. This is nine thinner leaves so they flex better but they actually hold the weight as well it rides amazing and with all this weight in here is designed to carry it and the rear end doesn't sag so i like that a lot why is he this close okay i think i got a cord in my way i'll fix that in a second all right i think that's all for now I'll give you guys more updates on the road. I just wanted to say hi and thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for subscribing. I hope to have more from the trail. This is day two, but it is the pre the five day pre getting to the trail. So I got to drive all the way from Arizona to Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, where I'm starting. I'm going to make the journey from North Carolina at Cape Hatteras uh, over to the official. Sam Carrero's Transamerica Trail meet up there because I want to do a coast to coast and then I'll take the official tat uh, more or less all the way across to Port Orford and then down Pacific Coast Highway back to Arizona so look forward to uh, chatting with you guys in the future follow along and uh, welcome to the channel one man trail